he's back to chew his bone he's back what a frank what a frank <laughs> hello hi welcome or welcome back to my channel today i'm gonna get ready we've got new products from phytosurgeons your products from Thrive Cosmetics and new to me products from Rare Beauty. So if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll hang out and get ready with me. All right, let's jump in to some skin prep. I have to get ready for meetings today. So I'm gonna start with the Fit Glow Sea Ceramide Toning Mist just to dampen the skin. And then I am going to use the Fit Glow IC Firm Eye Cream because my eyes being outside all weekend during the holiday really tested the allergy front i hope everyone had a lovely long weekend in the u.s even with everything going on what happened here there we go Fra frank must be trying to like steal the show he's chewing all right now that i've got my eye cream on i'm gonna go in and moisturize i am going to use the phytosurgeon's verdant force field which is the restorative moisturizer. You guys know how much I love the Phytosurgeons C Submerge Serum, which typically I use, but the products that I'm using now, I'm gonna have enough moisture with just moisturizer in this. So I wanna go in at this. I do want to read from the website. It is 38 Canadian dollars, so a little bit less in US dollars. It says it's a skin barrier reinforcing moisturizer that hydrates, softens, moisturizes, and protects with well-studied vitamins, active, and extracts, and it is a mid-weight gel lotion that feels almost elastic or mochi-like on the skin, dries down, and sinks into the skin ap after application. It's created with a blend of humectants, emollients, and occlusives to plump and protect the skin barrier. It's vibrant green, comes from a mixture of water and lipid-based green tea extracts, which are polyphenols, fatty acids, and a variety of vitamins and phytoactive compounds. As a mid-weight lotion texture, it is suitable for a variety of skin types. And it does come in a nice airless pump. I will pump it onto the back of my hand. That's what she looks like, very green. You can see it runs. So it's not super duper thick. I'm gonna grab that and just place some on my forehead and chin and then a little extra pump for my cheeks. I usually do about three pumps of this, but if you like green tea and or matcha, you'll love the scent of this. It does not have fragrance, but it does have kind of like that um, green tea scent from all of those actives. And my skin has been loving this. It is such a cool texture. I love how they described it. They said almost elastic or mochi like, very elastic feeling like, that's such an odd descriptor, but it just feels incredible. And I like to really work it into the skin, but it does dry down, which when you first put it on, it doesn't feel like it's going to. It feels, you feel the presence of something more occlusive on the skin, but it does dry down. And I am going to let that sink in for just a minute. And then I'm going to apply my Live Tinted Hugar, which no one's shocked by. Um, I don't know if the sale is still up when this goes up on Wednesday, but they did have a buy one, get one free sale on their site. I partook. Thank you, Megan. Um, because I am, we're getting very low. She's flattening out. So yeah, I'm going to go let this sink in, apply this, and then we'll be back to apply some rare beauty products. All right. SPF is on. They're sinking into the skin. They're almost all the way. And you can see I'm a very, very dewy queen very very hydrated i'm gonna move into new to me products Ooh, from rare beauty so i've been wanting to try a lot of different things from rare beauty but as i was trying to find replacements for the shantikai i don't know what overtook me obviously i don't think that this is a dupe by any stretch of the imagination but as i was trying different base products i did purchase the um, rare beauty positive light tinted moisturizer broad spectrum spf 20 sunscreen in the shade 10n and then i also picked up the warm wishes bronzer stick and i have it in the shade power boost so we're going to use these today as always i'll give kind of like final thoughts at the end i have used both of these before 
uh, but it has been a while and I really need to decide what I think about these. So I just shook that up and I'm going to actually just squirt it right on my face, why not? And it says that this is a light to medium coverage product and the SPF in this is um, a mixture of titanium dioxide, zinc, and homosalate. So you get chemical and physical in this. And I'm actually just gonna use my fingers to spread that. And I will say it is a very light coverage product. I will probably try to build it in a couple of areas just with my redness. And you know I don't usually like to use fingers, but today's gonna be a very easy face of makeup. Phytosurgeons just lend so well to that. And then those Thrive Cosmetics lip balms, I think kind of go perfectly with that type of face of makeup. But as you can see, I'm getting coverage, but it's nothing like, it's not gonna hide all of my acne. And this is very lightweight too. And yes, it has SPF, but I'm not depending on this as my sole SPF. I don't even do that with the IT Cosmetics CC Cream and that one I would trust a little bit more, but especially being SPF 20, you need more. And this goes in really nicely with the fingers. And you know what? That is more coverage than I remember. Like it definitely evens things out a little bit for me, but you can see in person, it took down a little bit more redness than it is on camera. You can see I'm still very dewy. Part of that's gonna be the skin prep that I did, but this is also a little bit more dewy of a foundation. And this one is $29 for a fluid ounce, but I want to see, they say immediately blur skin with glowy, light to medium coverage while hydrating and protecting. So we're gonna be very, very hydrated today. I have some powder that we'll bring into it if we need it, but I am gonna run over that with a brush just to make sure that I did not miss anything. I'm just gonna use a little brush that I'm gonna be using for my concealer and just pat over that. This is why we skipped additional serums because I'm very, very hydrated, <laughs> which I love. It might not be for everyone. I think that this would look probably a little bit less shiny and dewy if you weren't using such hydrating products underneath, but I'm a hydrating kind of gal. And I was debating between Kosas and the Rose Ink. And I think since this is a lighter face, we're gonna go ahead with the Kosas concealer and I'm gonna use that under my eyes and to spot conceal. I'm not gonna worry too much about the redness that's on my cheeks because some of that's gonna be camouflaged with blush because I like a very blushy look. I'm going to hit the inner corners of my eyes. We'll blend this out and then we will jump in to bronzer. I think that these are going to pair nicely together. Again, the Kosas is not a matte concealer like the Rose Ink, so it's going to preserve a lot of the glowiness that we have. So I'm definitely going to go in with a little bit of powder strategically just to keep from looking super, super glowy, especially because all of my meetings are going to be on camera. I love the Kosas concealer and it's going on really well so far with that skin tint foundation, what have you from Rare Beauty. I also have a mascara I'm really excited to talk about. Yeah, that is a perfect amount of coverage for me day to day. Things are not fully covered, but so far my skin does look just very hydrated. And like skin, like nothing is looking super cakey or makeup-y, just very hydrated, which I love. If you have acne and dry flakes, this routine, she'll get you working. All right, let's jump in to the Warm Wishes Bronzer. And I have this again in the shade Power Boost, which I believe is the lightest shade. Yeah, true tan with neutral undertones. 
and it says that this is a breakthrough bronzing stick for quick invisible sun kiss glow with a smooth seamless second skin finish just swipe on blend and go so this is the shade of the bronzer it is almost more yellow and orange than i typically like to go i like to go a little bit rosier so we'll see how far we can get with just this but then i might bring in something depending on how this goes on but it goes on like you barely have to touch the skin it feels very like smooth i do like this i'm gonna rub it between my fingers and talk about it because it's so interesting but i'm going to then grab this elf flawless face brush face brush i have talked about these um these are in a set with the rose gold handle and there is i think three to four brushes but this one and the cheek brush are so nice with cream products and the set all three or four brushes together, I wanna say it's four, is like $14, it's a really good value. So if you're like new to creams or new to kind of building your brush collection, I would recommend this set, it's really nice. What the heck was that about? But I'm not concerned that I laid down both sides because it doesn't dry down to a point where you can't blend and move it and another thing is I wanted to try this because I'm not a huge um, stick or cream bronzer girl like I typically use a powder bronzer I think because I feel like I have more control over it because bronzer can go south on my very pale skin very quickly but this one really does blend nice I'm not mad at it I think I want to add a little bit more like further up here on my cheeks and we'll do a little V underneath I know there's mixed opinions about bronzing your neck but I'm too lazy to self tan and most of the time day to day people are only seeing me from the chest up so let me live my life you know I'm just gonna pat that in I mean it lays on the skin so nice it just again looks like skin it doesn't look like pigment sitting on top of skin especially if you can find your color in this I would highly recommend that it doesn't feel sticky I mean I'm pretty dewy but that actually feels almost like it took down some of the dewiness a little bit not in a bad way I'm still radiant and skin like I need to pull this out more it's like a very natural light bronze on me and it doesn't look too yellow so far i like that and i don't know if i said the price this is 23 dollars. so i that's another reason why i wanted to try rare beauty is she's so moderately priced especially for sephora which so nice okay i'm going to do my brows off screen and then we will be back all right, for those of you who have a thing about brows, you'll be happy to know that I cleaned mine up and hopefully the shape is looking much better. I feel very perfected in the brows department, but I am very, very dewy. So I am going to go in with the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Care Pressed Powder. Vital Pressed Skin Care Powder, close. And I have it in the shade Translucent. If you did not see my Credo video where I test this out, I like hate to say that I love it because it is a $75 powder. <laughs> yes, sorry, Babo. And I do not take lightly to that. You do not need this powder. I think the Well People is a beautiful powder for $20, $22, somewhere around that range. But I will say, if you are someone who really, really struggles to get powder to look that good where it just looks like skin it's not cakey like i do this is incredible like i have to be delicate with the well people because it can tend to build up at a certain point the kosis looks terrible on my skin everyone says it's blurring it is not it makes me look nuts this doesn't so i will use this all the way up all the way up but 
let's get in to the very exciting part of this, which is the new blushes from Phytosurgeons. It is their Toasted collection. You guys, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting on this. I am so, so very excited. I'm going to swatch those along with the blushes that I have from the original blush release, and we will go through those. Okay, just watching those, I am so, so excited. So I'm gonna hold them up while I read the description because Phytosurgeons does the best descriptions. It makes me so happy. Let me see if I can manage to hold all four. Questionable. This is what they look like though. I'm so excited. It says, Skin Spark, the toasted blushes. Well, folks, we all heard the request for more muted, earthy, nude tones in our Skin Spark Blush Balm formula, so we did our best to take inspiration from some of the best selling shades and make them into a series of more skin tone adjacent colors for everyone. Please welcome and enjoy the Toasted Blush Collection. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And these, again, are a moussey cream that resembles soft chocolate truffle in texture, melts to the touch, but dries down to a natural, somewhat powder like finish that does not remain sticky or greasy. Could not agree more if you are interested in kind of like my entire thoughts around the skin spark blushes from phytosurgeons i have a video on my channel i'll link it down below go check that out but they are 21 canadian dollars so a little less in us but i want to walk through the original release first so at the top i have fume which is my everyday blush and it's so interesting it looks more peachy on camera today but alas she is not but then I have Inferno next, Smolder afterwards, which you've seen me apply both of these on my channel. Then I have Fervor, which I have worn on my channel before, and Singe. So we have like the most neutral of them all. This is my everyday blush. I've used it the most. Then we get into some of these like warm terracotta tan shades, which are beautiful in the summertime. Then Fervor is one of my favorite winter and spring colors. It's just a very nice bright berry. And then Singe is like their um, neutral pink, which I'll blend that out a little bit more. I This one is new to me. I have not worn that one yet because I am much more into the shades that I'm about to show you. Ooh, I'm so excited. Drum roll, please. I can never find that sound and I'm too lazy to go find it. Anyway, Sublimate is aka the toasted version of fervor which is this guy right here so it says that it is an earthy tannin rich deep cherry tone reminiscent of a fortified wine spot on and this shade is gorgeous like this was not the one that i thought was going to be my favorite but i think it is my very favorite what a delicious delicious shade this is going to give that just come in from running in the cold vibes but also it's just gonna be beautiful like this with a red lip, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, okay. Next I have the shade Exothermic, which is going to be Toasted Inferno, which is this shade here on my hand. And it is a rich neutral caramelized rose tone with a woody essence. Spiced chocolate bar is an apt description, agree. It has that chocolatey vibe, but there's there's a hit of pink and kind of violet almost under there. Again, another beautiful shade. I think on me, it's going to be like such a cool contour blush. Then the next to last shade we have here is Evaporate, which, which is a toasted smolder, which is this shade here. And it says that it is... A neutral smoky peach think roasted brown sugar milk tea again spot on I feel like those can make blushes that are called like milk tea or something like that is probably right in the family with this but it is so gorgeous this is like such a good neutral blush for you know lighter skin tones these are gonna be so nice for deeper skin tones and light skin tones like because you can share these out but oh my gosh this is so pretty and then last but not least is the most exciting in my mind, which is Condensate, which is Toasted Fume. So Toasted of that top shade, which is my everyday shade. This is the one I thought was going to be my very favorite. And while it is, the shade is giving it a run for its money. Honestly, all of them. But it says this is a cooler toned, muted, dusty pink with a hint of violet. The vibe is a lavender oat latte. Spot on. It is 
it's got that brown it's got that pink it's got that violet i think that this might be the dupe i've been searching for for aphrodisiac which one the color dupe i am so excited about but two to have it in this specific formula i cannot withhold the excitement that i have and honestly i feel like i absolutely have to use that one today because of that but we might play with some of these other ones I will continue to wear these so maybe we'll do a series of like get ready with me or looks where I can test all of these out or if it's something that you do want to see me do like a separate video of just swatches let me know and I can swatch all of the blushes that I have from them okay hopefully I didn't blabber on too much but we are gonna I'm so itchy <laughs> we are gonna go in with condensate oh. What a beautiful brand new jar and what a beautiful color. I am going to apply that with my Sky Fluff brush from Phytosurgeons. Also love their brushes. This one is 18 Canadian dollars. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that on the brush. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, already love. You guys, I 1000% think that this is a dupe for aphrodisiac and I'm dying. I'm dying. I might have to go grab my aphrodisiac and swatch them side by side. Dying. Absolutely dying. See, this is why I love it so much. It's just a very natural blush color on me. And if I build it up, it kind of bridges the gap between blush, bronzer, and contour for me, which I'm not usually a one and done anything type of gal because I like to apply product. surgeons I will never be able to repay you the amount of blushes I have swatched trying to get that dupe is crazy I mean and you see how easy they blend especially with this brush which is like a very dense yet blendable brush I love these brushes but <laughs> I'm so happy I'm so happy I could cry. We're going to swatch this at the end. We are. But I'm wondering if I should play a little bit and add a little extra something something. Maybe exothermic towards the back. Let's do that. Going in with exothermic. I love these blushes so much. I might have picked up quite a lot. I'm going to dust some of that off on the back of my hand and we'll continue to blend. Yeah, see, this is like a contouring blush for me, which I love, and we haven't applied contour yet, so. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I love these, they knocked it out of the park. And I do wanna say, I got this in the first round, they sold out very quickly within hours. They restocked and I think they have sold out again. So if you are dying to get your hands on these, be patient with them, but I will tell you that they are 1000% worth the wait. And I'm so happy with that cheek. I think we're going to move forward. I am going to do um, a quick eye look with some of the Phytosurgeons Flash Fluorescent eyeshadows. And I'm not 100% sure what I want to do. I'm kind of stuck between Magnetic Maple, Oxidized Olive, Defiant Dahlia, and Fractal Freesia Shock, which I have used before. Or, 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 I think I'm going to do evaporate on my eyes and see where we get with that. That's like that toasted peachy shade. And maybe we'll top with some of the shadows. And because these dry down a little bit, I have no problem trusting them on my eyes. But this is going to be such a nice base, I think, to build on to give more dimension than just a one and done. Yep. This is like, if you need to pack one thing, this would be gorgeous on the eyes, lips, and cheeks, and I trust the formula to do all three, and I don't typically trust formulas to do all three, because usually something is formulated more for something else, especially for someone like me who really loves nourishing lip products, but I think these would be nourishing enough. I love that, I love that, love that. On top of that, you guys, I am so sorry. She's itchy. 
Do we want to do magnetic maple or oxidized olive? Let's do oxidized olive. Just a tiny touch on the lid to give like a smoky. That's what she looks like. She's very pretty. Yeah. It gives just a hint of green. This is such an interesting shade. I love it. And even the description is like, it's green, but not green. You get hints of green, but it's not like an in-your-face forest green. And it just adds a nice little sheen, a little bit of gold, and that touch of kind of green smokiness. There, you're going to see it way better on that eye. Lovely. Ooh, 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 I feel so in my... These are like such my shades, like earthy at home on the skin and easy you saw that two second we talked about 10 second eyeshadows in the last video two second eyeshadows you know insane next i'm gonna go in with lashes i'm not going to keep on camera me applying this that is so hard for me to watch i can't imagine you enjoy it but i will come back after we do one eye but it is the age perfect lash magnifying mascara from l'oreal easy to remove waterproof this is a tubing mascara. If you're going to try this, make sure that it's the one that says easy to remove waterproof or else it's not the tubing one. I don't know why they wouldn't put that more forward in their marketing. I've seen a lot of people talk about this. It has a natural bristle wand, not an hourglass, just a typical cylinder shape. And I'm going to apply this to one eye and come back and we'll talk about this. Okay, I'm so excited. So there is one eye done. This is, I'll talk about it while I apply the other eye. This is a very dry mascara compared to the Thrive. Now I have tried a handful of other tubing mascaras. The Thrive is very thick on the lashes and once you get your first layer down, that is it. You cannot build it. It will start getting very, very clumpy. Oh, I'll show you how to fix that in a second this one is so dry in a good way that it is a much more feathery appearance to the lashes and you have time to build it so like i go in and do two layers of this and i really like how it looks it is a different look than the thrive the thrive is going to be more kind of clumpy and spiky in a good way i love how thick that makes my lashes look Whereas this one is going to define the lashes separately, but it also builds really great volume at the base. It's very black at the base, so it almost looks like I've applied eyeliner, but I haven't. I will say, of the handful of tubing mascaras that I have used, this comes off as clean as the Thrive in the big chunks. I've had others that come off in little flakes that don't really tube at all. This one really does, and I have really been liking it. So I'll wrap final thoughts on that in a little bit, but that's what it looks like on, and it's like high lashes, you know? And if the Thrive tends to be a mascara that really weighs your lashes down, this is gonna be so much lighter and allow your lashes to keep a curl, so I really do like it. We're gonna use the age old trick of a eyebrow brush, and I'm going to flick that away, done. Day saved. This is what's itching my face. Oh, MG. Okay, sweet relief. Sweet, sweet relief. I totally forgot to prep my lips, but that is okay because today I am testing out the new Thrive Cosmetics Sheer Strength Lip Balms, and I have the shade Melissa and Rowan. And we are going to pull up the page to talk about these. Okay, these are $26 each. They came out with six shades. The shades that I got are Melissa, which is a warm sienna, and Rowan, which is a deep berry. They are sheer. They come in a slim tube like this. I will swatch them. So this is Melissa. And you'll see what I mean by sheer on the back of my hand. And this is Rowan. It also comes in a clear, a coral, a red, and a pink. 
Very sheer. So the top is Melissa, bottom is Rowan. I will swatch Melissa first and then we'll swatch Rowan and talk about the formula. So again, $26 each. And you can always build sets on Thrive's website. And these, these have a very familiar scent. There's like a hint of fruity, but it's trying to peek through all of the ingredients. So it's not like fragrance forward. More so ingredients than anything else, but there's a slight fruity scent. I don't know what that reminds me of, but that is Melissa. And I liked this, even though they said it was a muted sienna, it's just like a nice everyday nudie brown with a hint of like pink on the lips. Almost looks violet in the tube, but on the lips, it's just like a nice little brown. Very comfortable and nourishing. They almost, they kind of feel like a balm version of the N Beauty to me. Like they have that oily feel, that nourishing oily feel, but they're thin, they don't migrate around, but they're not super gel-like. They're just closer. They're more oily feeling than that Beauty Pie lip balm. So they feel a lot more nourishing than like chapstick. Do you know, it doesn't feel like just wax going on the lips. It's like nourishing butters and oils on the lips. I like it. Let's go ahead and put on Rowan and come back. All right, so this is Rowan, the deep berry. I love a nice berry tinted lip balm, especially in the fall and winter. We're getting closer, everyone, which is so crazy. But I love how this goes with the rest of the tones on my face. I did want to bring up, this does not blur the lips as much. It still looks nice, they're hydrated, so that's always going to help with the lip lines. But I wanted to bring it up in relation to the Olivia Palermo lip balm that I've talked about. This blurs the ever-loving you-know-what out of your lips, and this one feels stiffer, but still nourishing. This one is $29, and you get 0 .08 ounces. With the Thrive, you get 0 .1. So you get slightly more product in the Thrive, and it is less expensive, however, this feels chicer and this is going to blur your lips. So nourishment, I'd say they're on the same playing field. Blurring, I would go with the Olivia Palermo. I think I'm gonna do a whole blur video because there are products out there for you if you love the blur, but I like these. These are nice, I'm happy I have them. I can't say that I'll be collecting all of them. These are the shades I'll reach for the most, but yeah, wanted to throw these in there. So let's go ahead and do a quick round up of all of these new products. So for $26, I think you could probably find something a little bit cheaper that does the same thing, but these are really nice, especially if you build a set and save even more with Thrive. I do recommend these, I like them. Plus you're supporting a company that I really stand behind, you know? Next, I'll go ahead and say the Westman Atelier powder. You do not need this, it is very pricey. However, if it's in your budget and other powders do not work for you and look very makeup-y on your skin, for me, this does not, like it is incredible to me how not makeup-y this looks even when it mattifies my skin. Can't say enough good things about it, I love it. Whether or not there's actual skincare benefits, the jury's out. I can't say that I'm anticipating being able to pinpoint that a powder that I place in strategic areas is gonna do anything, so it's just a powder, you know? Next, the L'Oreal Paris Age Perfect Lash Magnifying Mascara, easy to remove, waterproof. I really like this. If I'm ever in a situation where I don't feel like paying $24 for mascara, and this one was, I think, 11 on Amazon, I'll get back to this. Also, I prefer this mascara to the Thrive for the days where I want to wear just thick mascara and I still want that kind of fluttery appearance I want a curl to hold. I really, really do endorse that mascara. The other drugstore and high-end TV mascaras, I would not. That and the Thrive are the only ones I will go for. Thrive is my absolute holy grail, but that is such a good tubing mascara. Next for Rare Beauty, the skin tint. I actually really like this and I absolutely need to start reaching for it more. It does not grab on any of my texture. That could also be the base products we use to hydrate, but this is hydrating in itself. And now I'm reminded why I thought this might be a good dupe for Chantecaille because it is hydrating throughout the day. So if you're looking for something that's more affordable, 
It's not gonna have some of the skincare ingredients that the Chantecaille does. It's not exactly like the Chantecaille, but it is hydrating enough that it's not gonna catch on any texture or like dry acne flaking skin. I really like this. And it's a nice medium, light medium, light to light medium. I wouldn't even say medium, but it's a, a good coverage, a little concealer, and you can feel very put together. Along the same lines, the Rare Beauty Warm Wishes Bronzer Stick. I really like this and need to reach for it more. Once you blend it out on your fingers, it is that silicone powder feel. Incredible, dries down, it's not gonna budge. So this performs more to me like a powder than a sticky cream, and that might be a good entry point into cream bronzers for me because traditionally I'd rather just use a powder. Then the Phytosurgeons Toasted Shades. <laughs> OMG, obsessed. You're probably gonna see me wear nothing but these for the foreseeable future, especially fall and winter. Again, if you didn't get your hands on these in the first couple of drops, be patient. These are absolutely worth the every minute you wait and every dollar you spend. Those are 21 Canadian dollars, I believe. Let's just double check. They are, so even cheaper in the US. Again, Phytosurgeons is an outstanding brand for beginners, beginners into cream, makeup enthusiasts in general innovative formulas that are very effective and super, super easy to use. Also the flash fluorescence on my eyes that I used in the Oxidive Olive, I love that shade. It's just a nice natural shade. It gives me a little bit of definition and color without being too crazy when I apply it the way that I did. And then the Verdant Force Field, I am absolutely over the moon for this. So far, this and the Sea Submerged Serum stand true to all the claims. I've talked about um, the interview that Jason did where he was really struggling with skin, so he did the work in understanding ingredients that would help heal his skin and make it happy and healthy. It comes through in all of his products. I'm very tempted to pick up the other two serums. I am like almost three quarters of the way through Sea Submerge and will be repurchasing this. I am very tempted to repurchase this. I've used it in the morning. It's light enough and sinks in fast enough that it gets you through the day without being super greasy. I've used it at night. It is occlusive enough that it locks in the moisture for me. My skin is really bouncing back from the hormonal stuff that it was going through. And I think that the Sea Submerge and this product have really helped continue to heal some of those spots without them leaving behind too much of a scar. I'm just really happy with the skincare. Overall, there's not one thing on Phytosurgeon's website that I would not recommend. The Rare Beauty I really liked, and the Thrive is nice. I think it's more of a dupable product, but if you're already getting all of your makeup from Thrive, I recommend it as well. It's not like blowing me out of the water or anything, but it's a nice tinted lip balm, nourishing. What more could you ask for? So, yeah, this was kind of my face of new items, and I feel very so like me. I feel very pretty in this face of makeup, and I am, I cannot get over how hydrated I am. And yes, I have textured skin, but like this just looks like healthy skin. I don't look like I've really pounded the makeup on. Incredible textures. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. Hopefully this inspires you to do a very skin-like look with minimal products. None of the products I used outside of the Westman Atelier were over $30. Maybe the moisturizer in the SPF. We're just gonna scratch that, but all of these were like mid-range prices. Photosurgeons just kills it. I'm rambling. I hope you have a good day. I hope you had a good weekend. And I will see you in Friday's video. Bye.